No, sorry, not you. Oh. <laughs> I just realized something on these lists that I've been pulling up. But go ahead, sorry. But you were going to say, where are we going to? We'll do a drum roll, please, and I'll be like... <laughs> Josh is going to be the problem child of this podcast. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of Tylenol now, because I feel, <laughs> I feel the headache coming, and it may escalate into a migraine. <laughs> Yes, I, I am going to be that, that one thing that you needed to push that headache over to a full-on migraine. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cox. <laughs> Thank you for getting that reference. Hello, and welcome to a special edition of the Fire Pit Podcast. I'm Dan, British name Nigel. I'll use my British name again since the Road to Independence Day is behind us. We watched the last six films from Top Gun to Independence Day. Last week, we got to our destination, had a blast doing it, and now we're on to a new generation. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I read the wrong. I read the wrong. You, you had one job. One job. Fuck. Okay. Take two. That's it. You're, nope. Nope. It was one take. That's it. You're fired. Done. Done. We're <laughs> ruined the podcast. Yeah. No, we can't do so. This is no. why we're never going to uh, do this live. Hello, and welcome to a special episode of the Fire Pit Podcast. Uh, I am Dan, British name Nigel, and I will use my British name again because Independence Day is behind us. We just wrapped up the first of our journeys, the Road to Independence Day, where we went from Top Gun to Independence Day, and we're on to the new path. So to explain the rules to some of our new listeners that may have joined us on the middle of the road, and to explain where we're going next in our next journey, I'll kick it over to Reginald. Thank you, thank you. Um, hi, I'm uh, Reginald, American name Josh. And uh, I don't know why I do it in that way. I just think it's clever. I'm the guy who yelled present in class. You know, everybody was like here, and I would say present. That was me. I always figured you were that guy. Yeah, I am. I was that annoying kid who always did it. But Or, or the one kid who said present, I would have to do it again just to be like, fuck you, kid. Were you also that one kid that always, like, when the teacher asked if there were any final questions before they ended the class early and you raised your hand because you had, like, five or six? I would ask a question that wasn't total and completely relevant to anything. And they would just mm -hmm. get the teacher talking on a tangent like we're doing right now when I should be giving the rules. Anywho, what we're doing tonight or what we, how we do our movies, I should say, is each week we watch a movie. We give our thoughts before we watch it. Then we watch the movie. And then uh, we discuss after. You only get bits and pieces of that thanks to our uh, amazing editor, Thompson. The rules are simple. We basically play a version of Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon without having an end goal in mind. We take the movie that we watched last week. We take one actor who at least appeared in a scene and has a speaking part. So no cameos or anything to that effect. They have to be on the. They have to be listed on the credits, not unaccredited. And we so for one. so for example, I guess if we used Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, we can't technically use Sean Connery because he's uncredited in the movie. It's just a cameo at the end, right? Well, he has a well, speaking a role speaking in that. Role. Daniel but, Craig at in uh, The Force Awakens. Yeah, or like Hitchcock, like how Hitchcock would sometimes just like be a background character or something. He wouldn't like, count. But basically, they have to have some kind of a role. So mm -hmm. we've had minor-ish roles, but everybody's had at least more screen time than uh, just a quick cameo, basically. These are loose rules, too, so we can bend them. They're not hard hard rules. To explain why we're doing this and what, uh, what we're basically doing this podcast for, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to you, Thompson. Oh, thank you, Reginald. I am Thompson, American name Tom, Present. Irish name Thompson, German name Herr Tom, and so on down the line. Yes, so what we are doing here, we, as noted by Nigel and Reginald, we have just come off the road to Independence Day, and now we are in the search of a new destination, a final film that all other films will connect to. We have six films total the final film being the goalpost we are now meeting in this wonderful lobby so to speak to present our theses we've each come up with several lists of six 
um, a starting film and an ending film. The starting film, of course, as noted, has to have an actor or actress from the previous film we watched, which was, in this case, Independence Day. And lead that down into the penultimate film of this new path yet to be named. And who wants to tell the audience what that final film is going to be? I think we should let leave that to Nigel since this was his idea this time. Okay, well, I will, um, I'll let everybody know. We are on our way to the beach because it's summertime. Mm -hmm. And summer means two things. Summer means beach and summer means blockbusters. And the first summer blockbuster have to take place on a beach. Well, you better be on the beach or you're going to be in serious danger. We're on our way to Jaws, ladies and gentlemen, the very first summer blockbuster, at least the very first movie to be considered a summer blockbuster. It's also the movie that put Spielberg on the map and made him a household name. So it's a real important film. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun trying to get there. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Jaws was released June 20th, 1975. Right. Interestingly enough, it's rated PG. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed that too when we were when I was mapping movies. I, I actually thought for the longest time up until earlier this week, actually, I thought this, this is an R-rated movie, and I'm like, wait, no, it's not. Yeah, different times, man, different I was, times. I think that was the movie that made so everybody go. We need another one between PG and R. No, oh, that was Gremlins. Gremlins was the one where they were shoving animals and such in uh, blenders and blood was exploding everywhere. Same with and it was uh, still a PG film. <laughs> yeah, same with um, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. They were, you know, the dining scene where they're eating all the nasty looking animal parts. The fact that there's a scene where Indy gets brainwashed and beats the crap out of Shore Round. And the, the well, you know, and the biggest scene in the movie where the guy gets his heart pulled right out of his chest and it's still beating and yet it was considered a family film bring the kids speaking of gremlins speaking of jaws speaking of indiana jones we can thank steven spielberg for pushing the envelope for us to need a pg-13 rating thanks steven for another little bit of movie trivia what was the very first pg-13 movie wasn't it red dawn yes red dawn really yeah red dawn was the very first pg-13 film but there's like no blood in that at all. There's a pretty violent scene where they try to attack a Soviet tank. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and a couple of the kids get killed in that scene, so I can see why. Also, um, they're, you know, the very beginning of the movie when the paratroopers come down and shoot up a high school, which obviously wouldn't be filmed today. Oh, yeah, um, definitely not. Definitely not. But yeah, that that's also what pushed it into a PG-13 reading. It's, yeah, it's the very first PG-13 film. Yeah. And now everyone's learned something today. <laughs> the more you know... Well, yeah, All so right. we're each going to take turns giving a list. Uh, we, we're not sure who's going to start first, but it's like one, 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 and then we go back to the first person, and they give, and it's like so on and so forth. And at the end, once we've given our theses, the pluses, minuses, we all take turns, and we vote on each list. And the win whichever one gets the highest score, highest, most praise, whatever, whatever, uh, is the one we go with. And so. as like last time, we ended up inadvertently coming up with a theme. Bonus points for themes. We're not actually awarding bonus points, but it's like, <laughs> who's lying? The points don't matter. But like last time, we the theme that was astronauts and aliens, space and aliens, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Inner space being the notable exception, but it's still kind of related. Yeah. Although so, he's a uh, test pilot. He's a test pilot. Yes, he is. He is. That's why so. I said it kind of relates to going from Top Gun to Independence Day. So this time we are, we don't have a set theme, so we don't have a road to, but we are going to try. I think we all worked on our list. No, keep this in mind. <laughs> None of us have heard each other's lists yet. Yeah, aside from Jaws being the goal. Yep. That's that's all we have to work on, really. But Josh, you have been building this and building okay. this and Let's building Let's start this. with this. Tell, I'll go last. I want Dan to go, then Tom. I want you to tell me how many lists you guys came up with. Last time we did this, I only had one list, and you all had two or three. This time, I did my homework. I was trying to get at least three or four, but unfortunately I couldn't. But I was at least able to get two. So, Nigel and Reginald. You since have you, two, okay? I have two. All right, Nigel? Reset. I have 
seven. That's just counting the six. If we wanted to count all the, the five movie ones I did, um, I have 14. But I've got uh, seven six movie lists. Dear God. That's awesome. I have... Drum roll, please. 3,339. Fuck you! Wait, 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 wait. You have 3,000 lists? Yes. Okay, remember Monday when we were talking and uh, you guys were talking about, hey, I'm making this one. I found a really good one. And I told you I'm learning Python? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I wrote a web scraper and I basically have been pulling down stuff and comparing them and writing an algorithm to connect these movies. Okay, you do know that there was no extra credit (laughs) on this assignment, right? That there, There was no need for this. We need to keep uh, this under an hour. What the hell, Josh? (laughs) We set a $20 limit and you're buying a Ferrari. Yeah. (laughs) We'll just tell him it's from all of us. No. Fuck you. On a side note, (laughs) Python is actually a very interesting language, and I thoroughly enjoyed playing with it the past few days. Okay, so you have a choice between Oliver, because I'm going to name you after Oliver Cromwell, because he usurped the British crown and um, made everyone in England look really bad for several years. Or (laughs) I'm going to name you Oscar after Oscar Wilde, who had no humility whatsoever. So I could give another podcast, and I won't bore the listeners with ways I've increased the efficiency. Basically, I will say this, though. I uh, did add a certain uh, filter for mine. So all of my movies are summer movies that was released. I'm not going to say a blockbuster, because they all weren't blockbusters, but they were all summer movies released in the months of may to august so i do have a couple that i was pulling from but yeah i can basically find the connection between any two movies with x number of jumps now okay okay i'm i'm gonna set i'm gonna have to do this i'm gonna say one we're gonna you and i are gonna talk after this josh because (laughs) i have i can't keep up with technology i was up to like one in the morning trying to find a third list the old-fashioned way and here you come in with your robots like oh yeah i've got three thousand lists guys what's i mean what's up my computer was running like dog shit last night i had so many chrome tabs open on imdb (laughs) linking all these movies and i'm like oh okay well gee Python, there we go. And two, two. The minimum is going, the, the <laughs> limit is going to be two lists. Let me put it like this. So far, um, I'm just I'm running a script right now that is uh, linking iRobot. And I am right now on, oh shit, 68,882 divided by two. <laughs> that's, not even, that's not even possible. There aren't even that many movies. Yes, there is. And I'm not even through using iRobot as the first one. It's beginning to learn at a geometric rate. <laughs> I have no scope or scale for this. <laughs> I, I've been testing this goddamn thing. It's been consuming my life for the past three days. I think my family misses me. My kids haven't eaten. That would explain why IMDb was running kind of slow last night. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't my 200 tabs open on Chrome. 200 tabs. They wish that was all they were dealing with yesterday. <laughs> God. But hey, I only did it in three days. It took me only a week to come up with these six movies. It took God six days to create the universe. Josh is like, yeah, I got a Python script for that. (laughs) All right. All right. So, Josh? (laughs) Well, we should get started now if we got 3,000 movies to go through. And we're going to go through each of these lists from iRobot. And I'm not even going to start running the other ones yet, people. So expect this to be a long podcast. Oh, for God's sakes. (laughs) We have been in awe of the the python script for the past 20 minutes i think so i say we start looking at some of the lists here how about i start since i only yeah. have two that works. Yeah, go ahead all right so i'm going to call this this first list here the hunters and hunted list because the theme are there's all there's uh, someone or something hunting or being hunted Okay. Uh, uh, the first film, uh, we're taking Jeff Goldblum from <sighs> Independence Day and going into The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou 
And in that film, uh, Bill Murray's character is hunting for the tiger shark that killed his friend. From Life Aquatic, I'm taking Owen Wilson and going into Anaconda. Oh, <laughs> interesting pick. He was in right. that one, wasn't he? Yeah, he yes, was. He, he was. I think he gets eaten. Uh, yes, he does. And I think along with him, he shares a space in that snake belly with Danny Trejo in Heat. Because you have Al Pacino hunting Robert De Niro. I know that's kind of squinting, but he is a detective hunting. Um, right. Al it's Pacino. been a while since I've seen that movie. Also, uh, that, that movie's got our uh, our good friend from Top Gun, Val Kilmer, in it. Oh, yes, yeah. it does. And it also has John Voight, who Ooh. is an enemy of the state with Will Smith. Oh, and, John. I know. And Gene Hackman. John Voight is hunting will smith and will smith needs gene hackman's help to escape him and we have gene hackman he's hunting drug smugglers in the french, french connection right awesome and, and then, then french connection got roy scheider in it hell yeah yep and then to jaws so that's the hunters and hunted list right there not awesome. a bad list at all huh? Some pretty cornball. interesting movies, some cornball movies in there, um, political thriller, Anaconda's huh? a giant monster movie, cheese ball, but it's a decent One of those film. movies that was awesome when I was in middle school. Yeah, I remember not caring too much about The Life Aquatic, but I will probably, I'd, I'd like to watch it again under the eye of a reviewer now. Yeah, Tom, actually, overall, pretty decent list. All right, so th again, that was my first list. Nigel, do you want to go next? Yeah, I'll go. Um, again, this one doesn't have... It's not all summer movies, but this one is a summer tour, so to speak. It starts with Will Smith in Men in Black. Big summer movie. Big blockbuster yeah. movie. From Men in Black, we go Tommy Lee Jones to Batman Forever, which is our first superhero film in our podcast. And mm -hmm. it was a huge summer movie. Also... It's kind of a nice little tribute because Joel Schumacher just died. Anyways, I know it's not the best Batman movie by any stretch of the imagination, but it's 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 well, it's better than Batman and Robin. It's and, one of those um, ones you can put your mind aside for and enjoy. Yeah, and uh, like I said, it was kind of a more or less a tribute to Joel Schumacher um, because, like I said, he just recently passed away. He was a better director than some people give him credit for. I know he's mostly famous for bat nipples, but he actually did some really good movies and he had some really good ideas. Yeah. Um, so from Batman Forever, we take Nicole Kidman and we go into Days of Thunder. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Fourth movie is Tom Cruise in The Firm. It's a it was a big hit, big big hit movie, a big blockbuster. Another and it's one of those few movies where Tom Cruise actually acts and he doesn't just act like Tom Cruise. Um, or at least he doesn't play Maverick from Top Gun. I haven't seen it in a while. It's been a while since I've seen The Firm. I think my dad was still alive last time I saw. It. I think we watched it together. But in The Firm. This is where it gets a little similar to uh, Tom in the firm. It's uh, Gene Hackman in the French Connection with Roy Scheider to Jaws. Nice. We we had a uh, similar ideas there. Well, like I said, mine was it was a, a tour of things in the summer, with the exception of the firm, which is a lawyer movie. But you know, nice. I've never uh, seen uh, Days of Thunder. Aside from like the King's Island ride where you're sitting in the chair and the rumbles, but 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 that's no. that's the closest I've ever come to that film. It, so. it, well, the, the movie was advertised as Top Gun on a racetrack, and it's a, basically what it is. He he still yeah, it's plays. Like, it's the difference between Point Break and the first Fast and the Furious. One was with surfers, the other one was with racers. The so yeah. movies are literally the same thing. Hey, you know what? It worked better than the remake of Point Break. All right, so I guess I will give my first list, even though my first list is technically six. God dang it. There's, they're all really good. Okay. I call this my comedy tour. Or, uh, oh, God, that's such a good title, too. Yeah. Um, we're going to start off by using Randy Quaid to get to National Lampoon's Vacation, the 1983, the original one. From there, we're going to hop via John Candy to Spaceballs. Oh, Ooh. damn. That's so good. And then from Spaceballs, we're going to ride the Mel Brooks wave to Life Stinks. Which, if you're not familiar with that movie, it was stars Mel Brooks as basically a guy who's got to take... It's been years and years since I've seen the movie. Uh, a bet that he's got to live homeless for like a month or something. I remember watching the movie and it was hilarious, but it's been probably 20 years since I've seen it. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. In Life Stinks stars Michael Ensign, 
which he has a very minor role as a hotel manager in a movie called Ghostbusters. <laughs> From Ghostbusters, we can go to What About Bob, starring Richard Dreyfus, and Richard Dreyfus to, you guessed it, Jaws. I've seen What About Bob. I had bad memories of that growing up because every time I watched it, I was sick, so I associated being sick to What About Bob. <laughs> Pavlov's dog. I don't think I've seen Vacation all the way through. And I don't think I've seen Life Stinks from beginning to end. But yeah, I like uh, the, this comedy tour. I've actually got six ways to start where they all end with Ghostbusters to Jaws. So they all, all link to Ghostbusters. And I have a couple really good ones on there as well. Vacation's a good movie. John Candy, Space Paws, obviously great. I've never seen Life Stinks. So that got a zero. It wasn't very popular. It was not very popular. Yeah. Um, I have never seen Ghostbusters ever in the history of ever. So I gave that to <laughs> my kid. What about Bob? I actually have seen and I didn't care for. So that one got a minus one. And obviously Jaws has got a score. What about Bob is probably the worst yeah, one. Yeah, it's not a bad movie. I just remember like being kind of meh about it. Like it was like, eh, it's okay. Hey, this list is all right. I've never seen Life Stinks, but it's Mel Brooks, um, and it's a Mel Brooks comedy, so you can't mm -hmm. really go wrong there. Uh, what about Bob? I wasn't a fan of it, uh, but I think uh, I think overall your list is going to be pretty good. But will it compare to my sec and list, um, which I'm calling Don't Go Into the Water, <laughs> the, the theme being water and beaches. So we start off again with Jeff Goldblum in Life Aquatic. Okay. We then take Willem Dafoe into the sleeper blockbuster that critics and audiences raved about, Aquaman. <laughs> wow. Nice. I'm glad nice. I wasn't the only one that came up with a superhero film. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go Lighthouse, but after that, there's no one else in there. So it's like, yeah, I got to go. Oh, go ahead. No, you're fine. You're fine. Um, but from Aquaman, I took Nicole Kidman into Dead Calm. Now, this one actually I had to do a little digging. It's got it's got some high critic freshness on Rotten Tomatoes and 83 percent. The plot is Nicole Kidman and Sam Neill are a couple that are on a boat. They encounter Billy Zane, who um, is stranded. They help him and they find that things aren't what they seem and uh sure let's go with that <laughs> uh, all right so who's who are you taking from dead calm well i'm taking sam neil from dead calm uh where he's on a boat trying not to sink and going deep deep underwater in the hunt for red october Ooh. Nice. Love yes that love that film I know. I, I had I saw that. I was like, yes, absolutely had to include it on the list. And from Red October, James Earl Jones takes us into a relatively unknown but big name for its time, 70s pirate film, Swashbuckler. It's actually a comedy, kind of like a playing with tropes uh, pirate comedy. But for its time, it had some pretty big names at Angelica Houston. Peter Boyle, James Earl Jones, Bo Bridges. Tom Clancy is in this film. I don't wow. know if it's the Tom Clancy, but in my head canon, this is Tom Clancy. But also in the film as one of the main characters is our favorite shark hunting pirate, Robert Shaw, who plays Quint in Jaws. I've not seen Swashbuckler and I've not seen Dead Calm. I have seen Aquaman, and it's not a good movie, but it's a fun movie. Oh, it's a fun movie. Just kind rewatched of, it. I'd happily watch it again. Yeah, it's a fun, fun film. It's it it's not great, but it's definitely like you you watch it. Like, wait, why can't DC make more movies like this? Uh, yeah. Interesting love made made more than uh, Batman v Superman, and it was a December release. You you missed a couple words in that sentence. Made more sense than Batman v Superman. That's and why. Money. And made, that's why it made more money. I will give your list, Tom, a half a point because it's got a good theme to it. Just like how Independence Day was aliens and military and pilots and stuff like that leading into Independence Day. This movie does kind of lead into Jaws when it's all about water, beaches, boats, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it does kind of um, have a bit of a theme to it. Overall, not bad. I liked your first list a little bit better, though. Well, thank you, Nigel. And on that, I'm going to give you a preemptive bonus point to your next list for uh, 
kissing up to me. Uh, thank you for that. Now, Josh, have you uh, have you uh, parsed out a diamond? Well, it's like I was saying. I got. I don't. I can't maintain a theme. That's okay. We don't. The theme came on accident. The Independence Day theme yeah. came on accident. That was well. Just no, some... it's like I can find one, but I haven't had a chance to. Like I was working on this one called the Summer of Sequels mm-hmm. or a Sequel Slam or something, and. I couldn't get. Uh, I tried to get to another stakeout. This isn't a complete list. So, just, but basically, Independence Day uh, resurgence to Lost World Jurassic Park. Lost World Jurassic Park to Twenty Two Jump Street, and then I can't get. I need another like step between there that, I, that there isn't one. There isn't one from Twenty Two Jump Street to another stakeout. Yeah, Which would have uh, been cool. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been. It would have been a fun list. Yeah, but like summer of sequels, and I was like. But I've got other routes that I haven't been able to investigate. I had I had a list that I was getting really excited about. It was a uh, thrilling detectives list um, where all the movies were like kind of either detectives movies or whodunit movies or anything like that. Yeah. But then I, it was only it was a five movie list, not a six movie list, and I couldn't I couldn't find a jump uh, between them. Also, it technically breaks our rules because it would have used Will Smith three times, but well, not as a connection, not as a connection, but there was one of the middle movies also had Will Smith in it. So well, no, they could be in it. They could just, uh, like I, I made the mistake of, uh, not filtering out Will Smith on iRobot. So all of my lists start with Will Smith to something. So mm-hmm. it's like I, I needed to filter. I should have filtered him out. You can't filter big Willie. Come well, on. No, but- like I would have required to take the jump from ID4 to iRobot using Will Smith, but technically it's not inside of the uh, road to, so to speak. Sure. So uh, I was gonna like barring, you know, you guys have any issues with it, but uh, so it'd be the first. We basically do Will Smith back to back if we chose this route. Yeah, but it wouldn't be twice inside of the six movie connections. It starts with iRobot to Knight's Tale using Alan Tudyk. But it's like, I can go from the Dark Knight. Yep. So then you, but you go from Dark Knight using Christian Bale to the Dark Knight Rises. Okay. To, uh, and honestly, I should have found a way to link to the, see, it's like I didn't have a chance to fully vet it, but my summer of sequels could still work. I just need to yeah. find the right connection. Because then you go Dark Knight Rises to Jaws the Revenge starring Michael Caine. And guess who shares the screen in Jaws the Revenge to Jaws? The wife, right? I think so. Yeah. It's like one of the, like, not none of the big name people. Yeah, I can't remember the wife's name or the uh, actress's name. Lynn Whitfield, Michael Caine was in that one. Lorraine, Lorraine Gary, Lorraine Gary. I, I don't want to formally submit that one because it's like, at the same time, you know, I didn't have, I, I didn't complete the homework because I was building the house to do the homework in. I mean, you start strong with Iro. Well, I don't know. Strong is a very subjective term with iRobot. Uh, but at Knight's Tale, well, that's a good follow-up. Then And then Heat Ledger and Dark Knight, yeah, that would have got it. And then Dark Knight Rises and then Jaws of Revenge. Oh, that's uh, just uh, one of them. I can go to Shaft, the 2001, to The Crew, to Jaws. Ooh, okay. I can do... Yeah, I've seen Jaws the Revenge, and I just want to let you know that Michael Caine literally did that movie for a paycheck, and it shows. Like he is definitely checked out the whole film. Uh, yeah, I don't doubt. I don't. Yeah, doubt. like he gives zero fucks in the entire movie. Makes it blatantly clear he done this. He's done this to get a house. That's just all this is for. But you could do Dark Knight to Air Force One, Harrison Ford to Paranoia, Paranoia to Jaws, or oh. Harrison Ford to American Graffiti to Jaws. Pick one. The only thing I want to say, the only thing I want to say, is just keep an open mind. I mean, I know some of these have lists. Of, some of these lists have movies that either have a bad reputation or aren't that good, or maybe even it's a movie you haven't seen yet, but I'm not really excited to see. Mm-hmm. But as much as bad as Pathfinder was, we still had fun going yeah. through. Oh movie. yeah, and that's so, exactly what I mentioned it earlier. Is like you know we can do all of the good movies that we all really like, but we're going to run out of those pretty soon. And then we're going to have a nothing but stinkers. So like, like, you know, um, Tom's list where he had like Anaconda on it. Like I'm not the biggest fan of that movie, but I might have some fun turning my brain off and enjoying it with you guys. Yeah. Um, same with, uh, Josh's list has, um, your first list had, a uh, what was it? The comedy tour with the terrible punchline. That's what I'm calling that one. <laughs> yeah, Jaws, Jaws isn't funny at all. Um, <laughs> well, it is if you're the shark. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, then it's a tragedy because he gets killed at the end. Oh, uh, yeah. Or it's a Greek comedy. Um, oh, there you go. What was the oh, movie nice. you had on there? You had, oh, 
What about Bob? What about Bob? Yeah, like that movie. I'm I'm like, Ugh. but again, I'll have yeah, fun no, going like, through with you guys. If we have movies that we either haven't seen or we're just like whatever yeah. about, like okay, there's one list that I had: Vacation to a Mighty Wind. Are you familiar with that one? I know a Mighty oh Wind. Oh my I've god, I love seen. that movie. So okay, that. Like, Go ahead. Was, okay, that's going to be your next list. Oh, I'm thinking Nigel or Reginald, excuse me, but go on, go on, go on. But it was it was my comedy tour list. So you, you follow Vacation to be a Eugene Levy to A Mighty Wind. You follow Mary Gross to Club Paradise, 1986. Okay. So then a Club Paradise via Rick Moranis to Ghostbusters. Then Ghostbusters, what about Bob? What about Bob to Josh? Okay, I that, that, and I like that, Dan. I like the name. That, that's their. Uh, Greek tragedy or Greek comedy in the Greek comedy one. <laughs> it's all fun and games, and then someone dies. Greek comedy tour. <laughs> comedy tour. I don't know why, but I want you to add on ice to it. Don't add one ice. On ice. Cool. Why not? Let's add on ice. Again, I'm gonna say I like this list just because uh, it's for me. I'm liking some of the lists that have movies we've never seen because that's like a new mm. experience for all of us. Yeah, I've never. Seen, I, I I was gonna pitch that one because I've never seen a Mighty Wind or Club Paradise, but I like the idea of going through Ghostbusters. Because at least we're guaranteed one yeah. good film before we move on to what about Bob and then. Yeah. Nigel, what's your list? So this one is um a uh list that doesn't necessarily have a theme, although I guess you could say it has a theme that um. Uh, Amer- of, of genres Americans really like. It does kind of fit with our uh, summer kind of feel to it. Um, so it starts with uh, Will Smith in Bad Boys. Oh, nice. Okay, and I'm going to get this guy's name wrong. So if you ever listen to our podcast, I'm really sorry, but I loved you in the movie that's coming up. Anyways, his name is Chetki Caro or Caro. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I got it wrong. 100% I got that name wrong. Um, but he's in The Patriot because there's nothing Americans like better than to watch Mel Gibson kill British people. Wait, isn't he the guy that plays uh, Draco friend... Malfoy's dad? And like... No, 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 no. Oh. Ch- no, Ch- Ch- Chetsky Caro plays the French officer soldier that works with Mel Gibson's mi- militiamen in The Patriot. Um, you're think... in the seminal classic, The Core. Yes, and he's also in... Um, He's in another really good movie, uh, the, the the professional, Leon, the professional. Oh yeah, he was in that. Oh. Movie. Yeah. But um, yeah, he's 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 made a living kind of um being a character actor. So he's he's not a household name, but you you'd know him when you see him. Um, anyways, he's in the Patriot, um, because like I said, there's nothing Americans like more than to watch Mel Gibson shoot up British people. I know the Patriot is about as historically um accurate. Accurate as Braveheart. Yeah, uh, maybe even less so. But um, like literally the only true thing that happened in the Patriot was the Americans won their independence. That's it. But uh, it's still a good film. From the Patriot, we go Chris Cooper, who's in a movie with Nicolas Cage called Adaptation. Oh, I love that film. Never seen it. I've actually never seen it. I've never seen it before. I think I'm I'm getting it confused with being on John Malkovich. It's actually made by the same people who who made um, being John Malkovich. That's why I think, is is this the one where like, it's like half of the the, uh, poster is like half Nicolas Cage's face and the other half is like a plant or something? Well, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Because Nicholas 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 Cage plays his I plays two parts. Yeah, his twin brother, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One's one's a charismatic guy and the other one's a uh, kind of a uh, aloof, nervous Wait, wreck, I guess. You mean Nicholas Cage is required to show range. He does, yeah. and apparently he does because this movie has like a ninety percent on Rotten Tomatoes. So it's like I've never seen it, um, but I was like, oh man, this actually looks pretty good. Um, anyways, um, from Nicholas Cage showing range in adaptation, we have Nicholas Cage also showing range in Face Off, where he plays both Nicholas Cage and John Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it overlaps with my last couple lists uh, to Nicholas Cage in Face Off, then John Travolta to Punisher, and Roy Scheider to Jaws. Easier. Like I said, this list doesn't have much of a theme to it, but they're decent movies. Like I said, I've never seen adaptation. It's been years since I've seen Bad Boys. Honestly, this is close to the perfect list i think because all with the exception of adaptation these are all pretty actiony 
guns and there are explosions happening. Um, in fact, I think there's an explosion. Explosions happened at the end of almost all of these films, except adaptation. Adaptation does get gun shooty near the end, though. Yeah, so and if it, you I, squint. So what was the uh, face off? Yeah, fa- uh, what were, were we going to ask, Josh? Oh, I was just going to say it was face off. So you need to get to face off in one, right? Do, uh, do I? What? No, that's if you like adaptation. I'm just you. You were wondering if there's other movies connected. <laughs> Oh. I mentioned something, but totally forgot that I was muted. So I was going to see if there were other movies in between there. Because yeah, it's like I... it, you almost have a theme going on there. American action, I would call this one. And honestly, adaptation, you squint, it fits because it does end with shooting. Um, no, I didn't mean to spoil, but it, they're... it's a slow movie and then action happens. Near the, the movie end. came out in 2002. So if I'm trying to avoid spoilers, I'm kind of bad at it. Fair point. But I think this could be – if we could pull an audible with adaptation as we go on. But Well, I, let's, let, let's see if, let's see if uh, Skynet over here can uh, come up with a script that goes from the Patriot to Face Off in one. I'm running it now. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got a good list unless, Josh, you have a ringer hiding – um, and Nigel, did you want to add a fourth one as well? Because you were saying a fourth you... list. A fourth list? Yeah. You no, said you I ha- think I'm. I'm. I, the the other list I had is fairly mediocre. It's. Uh, I don't even see it anymore. I may have deleted it. Okay. Yeah, I did have one. It was a bullet. I called it bullets and bites because the theme the theme was people losing limbs or getting shot. Uh, but it was Jeff Goldblum to Jurassic Park, Sam Jackson to Pulp Fiction, John Travolta to Face Off, Nicolas Cage to Con Air, John Cusack oh. to Stand By Me, and Richard Dreyfuss to Jaws. Hey, on, I'm adding that to the list because that's a damn good list. What what did you title that one? Bullets and Bites. Bullets and Bites. Okay. It, book, it bookends the, the the list bookends with animal attack movies. Jurassic Park obviously being dinosaurs, and Jaws being the shark, and then. There's bullets in the middle, and then, but John, but stand by me. There's no gunfights in it, and there's no animal attacks. But the kid does lose a limb <laughs> on the train accident. Holy cow! So okay, I missed that entire list. What was that? Okay, yeah. hold on. Take it it's, slow. <laughs> okay, sorry. I didn't think we were going to use this one. I threw it away. Okay. Anyways, Josh, um, it's Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park, Samuel Jackson in Pulp Fiction, John Travolta in Face Off. Nicholas Cage in Con Air, John Cusack in Stand By Me. We can also audible the fifth movie. We can go instead of Stand By Me, we can go Tom, if you want if you call an audible on this list, you can go Nicholas Cage, Con Air, John Malkovich to Red, and then Red has Richard Dreyfus into Jaws. So it still follows the bullets and bites theme. Yeah, I'm, Red, I'm yeah, totally Red I love I've never actually seen Stand By Me. It's considered one of the best movies of all time. I've never seen it. Although I can tell you the plot line beat for beat because it's been parodied so much. I've never seen Stand By Me. That's kind of why I put it on the list. But I've also never seen Red either. And I guess I think isn't Red about the movie about the old Cold War spies yeah, coming yeah, together we, for one last mission? Okay, I've yeah, never seen got, that movie. Neither have I. It's got um, Bruce Willis and oh Mira. Richard Dreyfus. Rich, Richard. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's got a pretty good cast and a pretty strong cast. So anyways, so anyways, Tom and Josh, if you guys want, we can submit. I'll submit the list as this. Jeff Goldblum to Jurassic Park, Samuel Jackson to Pulp Fiction, mm-hmm. John John Travolta to Face Off, Nicolas Cage to Con Air, John Malkovich to Red, Richard Dreyfus to Jaws. Because then that fits the bullets and bites theme. Because it's bookend by animal attacks, and then the rest of it is bullets. Oh, I'm not a huge fan of Con Air. Like, really? Again, like, it's been years since I've seen it. And I remember watching it, and I didn't enjoy it. But again, like I said, if we go with this, either any list we go with, it's whatever. We're, you ex- know what, though? We're, we are going to go with a list that we're going to have a movie where one of us is not going to either like oh, yeah, the movie or... Oh, yeah, that's the thing. That's why I said don't, don't judge the... Like, don't try to pick a list based off of my single preference. Yeah, this, this podcast is going to get really boring if all three of us always agree all the time. So... I agree yeah. with that. <laughs> Fuck you, Tom. <laughs> Shut up and watch the movie. Sad music. Hey, Jim. One has two thumbs and doesn't give a crap. Bob Kelso, how you doing? All right. Well, well I guess it's decision time then. I guess we got to figure out which one we want to go with. Welcome to a special episode of The Fire Pit. 
I am your interspiritual host, editor, and keeper of the flame, Tom. This is the second edition of our selection section, or whatever we're going to wind up calling it. As noted in the beginning, this is where we step away from the proverbial fire and find out where we want to go next and how to get there. I won't spoil which list we go with, but I'll give you a hint. It's... In the future, we'll be allowing listeners to vote on some of these lists and give their input. Uh, simply email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc.com. I-N-C at gmail.com. Simply put in the subject line which list you prefer, and your reasons why or why not, and depending on what you say or how you say it, and how many of you say it, it might actually influence the direction we go. And also, if you happen to have any other thoughts, comments, or recommendations, feel free to email those too. That email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I at gmail.com. Also, you can find us on iTunes now and Spotify. Just search for Fire Pit and we should pop up. Uh, the Fire Pit podcast might work. Just know there's a couple of Fire Pits out there, but we're the good one. Or one of the good ones. Top five. Definitely not on the bottom definitely not the worst just give us a listen and let us know you can still find us at firepit.podbean.com news updates and everything can and will be there as they come time to get back to the voting tune in next episode to hear us start on this first leg of our new journey thanks for listening and as always good luck Well, if I'm voting for a list, I like either – I do like Tom's first list where it was Life Aquatic, Anaconda, Heat, yeah. Enemy of the State, Frenchman's uh, – Enemy of the State. Not you. I was talking about the, the movie that uh, listened to me. Sorry. I wasn't ooing you. Oh, me. I was going to say. <laughs> you actually you know, like, to hey, you, early, and a half an hour ago, you said you liked this list. Yeah, because honestly, the only movie on your first list I didn't particularly care for was Anaconda. No, it's oh. Life Aquatic. Life Aquatic's the only movie on your list. So I just like kind of like, yeah. But you know, I haven't seen it in a while. Oh, so you have seen it? I I think I have seen Life Aquatic. That's the one where Bill Murray's going after the shark thing, right? Yeah. 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 I've never seen it, so I can't rate it. Rate it. Uh, okay, I I have seen it. I think I've seen it. No, maybe I, no. I've never seen Life Aquatic. Okay, I was thinking of the other like movie in that particular hey, hey. genre. If it if it uh, puts it into context for either of you, it's a Wes Anderson film. Yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. Not- no, I'm not the biggest fan of I'm not the biggest fan of Wes Anderson. I think he's overrated, but I will watch the movie if this is Honestly, what we decide. I don't think on. I've ever seen anything with Wes Anderson. Like I said, I like Enemy of the State. I like Heat. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I like it. Love French Connection. It's a good movie, and uh, I'm not. Big on well, I've never I've never seen Life Aquatic, so I can't really judge it. And I'm not big on Anaconda. Anaconda's big. big on you. Don't want no, none unless you got. No. <laughs> <laughs> but now let's see. Uh, Tom list one. I think my highest rated one so far. Both the Tom's list got a three for me. Both of yours got a four. We're starting on list number ones here. Uh, Nigel, I've I've got to give uh, your summer tour. Not counting Jaws, at least a three. I love MIB. You can't go wrong with it. I, and again, the French Connection, duh, can't go wrong there. I've never seen Nicole Kidman, and I've never seen all of the firm. So, I what? guess I could you've never that. seen Nicole Kidman. Do you, do you mean you've never seen Days of Thunder? Yeah, that. Okay. No, well, I've also never seen you know Nicole Kidman. I keep calling. She keeps saying we're going to get together. But well, I mean, admittedly, it was really hard to see Tom Cruise when they were together. <laughs> Batman Forever, I gave a point, but I'm not going to knock it down because it wasn't that bad a film when I saw it once upon a time. But I'm I'm not really all that excited to see it again, if we're going to be honest. 
but overall it's a solid list now that, okay that's the only one that i have to say kind of bogs it down at all but yeah okay so josh gave it a four tom gave it a three um the second tom list i guess if we're not counting jaws it only gets a two because i've never seen life aquatic i have seen aquaman and i do enjoy it so i gave it a one mm-hmm. um never seen dead calm love hunt for red october yeah. never seen swashbuckler we that heard anything like, about that movie I've never heard of it. I didn't even know that movie existed until Tom read that list off. Yeah, same. It's I guess Ebert loved it. Um, it's still got a pretty good critic rating on Rotten Tomatoes. And it's a comedy plus Robert Shaw just to be, you know, Quint, only a pirate. Let's see. Uh, Life Aquatic, it's one of those ones I don't know. Never seen it. But I could be persuaded to see it. You know, it's one of those ones I'm indifferent about. So I think a zero is a very good rating for that movie. Aquaman, I love that movie. I just watched it. I'll watch it again. It's a, it's one of those brain dead fun movies. Mm-hmm. Um, dead calm. Don't even know what that's about. Wife, husband, boat, stranded guy, stranded guy, dangerous, kidnaps family. Ten thriller, two, thriller. Yeah, thriller. High critic scores, decent audience scores on Rotten Tomato. Well, I could be persuaded. But no, I like that list. I think out of the two lists you gave, I don't know, I like them both. I think they're both pretty good lists. There, we should almost make it to where there's two shows we should be indifferent about. Because, again, I, like I said, I don't want to pick, like, all these are really good movies. But I don't want to blow our entire load. You know, like, if we spread it out, we can use these movies later on. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I think that's why I, the bullets and bites list, I've actually never seen Red. That's why I submitted that list. And uh, I'm going to, they're going to slay me here. But um, I haven't seen Pulp Fiction forever because I remember the first time I watched it, I didn't like 90% of the film. The only part I remember liking is towards the end when they're in the restaurant. The rest of the movie, Tarantino. I was, I think most Tarantino films are like But that. I haven't I remember... seen, I haven't seen it in a long time. I've seen a lot of other Tarantino movies multiple times, mm-hmm. but... Like for the longest time, up until Kill Bill Part 2 came out, Pulp Fiction was my least favorite Tarantino movie. So I haven't seen it in a long time, and I might change my opinion on it if I see it again. Honestly, if we have to not just give an answer of a list that we feel strongest about, Nigel's Bullets and Bites. I gotta I gotta give him the points. But yeah, I, it's just a solid list. If we picked it today, I there's. Well, let's go based on. Let's look at the numbers. Like, what, I, what about the two lists that I gave? We haven't talked. Okay. About. Well, yeah, that's right. We did kind of skip over you. I'm sorry for that, Reginald. A uh, comedy tour was all right. I gave that one again, not including Jaws, a three, uh, just because I've never seen Life Stinks, um, and I really. I have seen one about Bob, but I really didn't like that film. Then again, I did see it with young eyes. So I will not give it a negative. I'm going so that puts that one at a four. Again, if we're not ta- counting Jaws. So the only one I, with a zero is Life Stinks. I gave your comedy tour a three. Um, like Vacation, mm-hmm. like Spaceballs, never seen Life Stinks, love Ghostbusters. I'm not really looking forward to seeing What About Bob. And for your electric boogaloo, that was the electric boogaloo. Are we talking Mighty Wind? Um, no, that. Oh, there's a Greek comedy tour. I forgot about Greek comedy. Yeah, well, yeah. Read, read off the Greek comedy tour again. Uh, that was Vacation via Eugene Levy to Mighty Wind. Mighty Wind via Mary Gross to Club Paradise. Club Paradise via Rick Moranis to Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. What about Bob? What about Bob? Do uh, da 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 da. Jaws. And again, this is a solid list right here. Unfortunately, I have. I, Mighty Wind and Club Paradise get zeros from me because I haven't seen them, but I want to see them. I'm interested in seeing them. So if if it's a tie, it's almost a tie between Bullets and Bites and Greek Comedy Tour for me of your lists. Uh, Summer Tour 2 was honestly a really solid list there, but I this one has movies I haven't seen and I want to see. So that's that's the kicker for this Greek comedy tour for me. Okay, I gave the Greek comedy tour a two. Um, Love Vacation. Mighty Wind's an okay movie, but in my opinion, it's only got like one really funny scene, and that's about it. And it mm-hmm. takes a while, and it takes a while to get there. Um, never seen Club Paradise. Uh, and what about Bob? I gave it a minus seventy-five. Um, just because I don't like that movie and I'm not just looking forward to seeing it. But again, we're gonna come into that. So yeah, I gave it a. No, I gave this list a three as well, because I have seen Mighty Wind. 
I'm not going to give Mighty Wind a negative number. Last time I saw Mighty Wind, I was a little bit younger, so maybe it wasn't my cup of tea then. Maybe I didn't get all the... Yeah, because like I said, it's probably been almost 30 years since I've seen What About Bob. So I'm like, it's one of those ones that's like, I don't, I didn't like it when I was younger, but I'm kind of curious to see it through adult eyes. Like, I remember Back to the Future. First time I watched that, I loved it as a kid. I remember watching it again as an adult, and I'm like, there's so much I was missing. <laughs> Just, and you know, adult jokes that you don't get. Part of me wants to be like, I don't want to, I want to almost go average. I want to go at least something where I haven't either seen half of the movies or half of the movies are not what I want to see. It's like, I want to see more. Personally, it's like what I'm going for this route. It's like, I want to see more threes. I want to get a three out of this. I want the threes to win. Because I love, don't get me wrong, I thought Independence Day, The Road to Independence Day was awesome. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like... We watched was, great I, film after great film after great after film. great film. And it's like, we can't use, uh, if we stick to our, can't watch a movie for one year, Apollo 13 is out. And I don't expect Independence Day is going to fit into any other theme for the rest of the year, but like we can't watch Apollo 13. We can't watch Top Gun again. You know, we, we're, I'm thinking let's go with a three so we can stretch it out. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with not going great film after great film after great film. Yeah. Um, and that's it's, why it's well, like I'm honestly leaning towards Tom's uh, second list. Don't go into the water? Yeah, because it's like, yeah, I've seen Aquaman. I don't think that's going to come up at any other point during the year, but like Hunt for Red October, never seen Swashbuckler. I'm interested to see that one. Dead Calm, interested in that one too. And it's like, Dan, your lists are amazing. I love your lists, but at the same time, I'm like, they're all really good movies. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, I was going to we... say, if I was going to say, if we go with Tom's second list, we're going with Life Aquatic movie I've never seen, you've never seen, Tom's seen it. Two, two out of three of us are going in blind. Yeah. On Life Aquatic. Okay. Then we go to movie two, Aquaman. I've seen it. You've seen it. Tom has never seen it. So Tom's going in blind. Nicole Kidman, Dead Calm, all three of us going in blind. Sam Neill, The Hunt for Red October, all three of us going into a movie that we love. Swashbuckler, another movie, all three of us going in blind. And then we go into Jaws. This is a list that could spark some discussion yeah. and, and discourse. It's definitely not going to be as exciting for us as uh, the original, but you never know. We may find the, the re- exact opposite of Pathfinder. You never. Yeah, and, so, and I, I just Googled it. Dead Calms got really high ratings. So maybe it's a good movie. I just maybe I've never seen it. Yeah, it's it, like we pigeonhole ourselves into these movies we watch. Like, I remember I'd, get, I'd watch movies with my parents, and they just rent random shit from the VHS store back in the day. <laughs> it's like I would watch a lot of good movies, and then I noticed that I don't have that variety of movies that I watch when it's just me. And, you know, this whole point of this podcast isn't to just watch movies that we've loved or movies that we hate. It's also to discover new movies yeah. and to maybe – broaden our horizons or you know kind of a bit tom says he has no inclination to ever watch aquaman but you never know tom you may love that movie so, you yeah. know what i mean and same with me with life aquatic i don't care for wes anderson films so i've never watched it i avoided it like the plague but i may like it and swashbuckler i've never even heard of that film the same with dead calm but it's got good ratings and it looks like it came out of a time when I wouldn't have been interested in that kind of a movie. So maybe as an adult, I need to go and watch it. My vote, if I had to pick one, I would say Tom's second list. Yeah, I'm going to go with water, too. Oh, well, I'm, I'll, I mean, not to, you know, <laughs> really, you know, toot my own horn here. But if we have to make it official and, like, unanimous, I guess I could vote for Don't Go Into the Water. You're not allowed uh, to vote for your own list, Tom. <laughs> I know, Tom. I know you really liked Bullets and Bites. But Josh is right. That's... Jurassic Park, Pulp Fiction, Face Off, Con Air, Red, Jaws. That is banger after banger after banger after banger. And sad that we're not going to be doing it. But on the same time, almost all of these movies are really big movies. We'll, and with really big name actors, we'll get to those movies eventually. We have options. And we've got the algorithm on our side now, too. Yeah. So there's no stopping us. Right. <laughs> so if uh, I guess then since Tom doesn't technically get a vote because it's his own list, two out of three of us are going with Don't Go Into the Water. Which is a great theme for Jaws anyways, because that was the tagline to the movie. Don't yeah. go into the water. What are we going to call this? It's not the road to Independence Day or the road to Jaws. Are we going to call it Don't Go no, Into the Water? No, 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 no. Because we're going to Jaws and we, yeah. haven't been, we haven't been warned yet. So we should call this list Into the Water. I like it. I think we can like I think it. we can do better. I think we can do better than Into the Water. Um, what were, we were banding something out like a few weeks ago before we actually settled there was something like a summertime trip or something like that I think, wasn't it just like you and dan or dan came up with march to independence day but then he started calling it road to independence day and we all just kind of picked it up yeah, yeah. because I, I was originally going to call it the march to independence day and then the uh current political climate happened and i thought march would be in bad taste so i changed it to road because yeah, everything shut down in march 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's that's why I that's why I so, call it audible. I mean, we well, we go... have until we post it the thing, but I'm, I'm thinking like trip to the beach. Uh, how's the water? Well, to... uh, uh, yeah, keep on. Let's let's verb this as like we're traveling or we're going to. Road can be easily verbed as in traveling to Independence Day. Sure. Um, I don't want I don't want to call it Shark Month either because that's taken. Yeah. Swimming into summer. Oh, here we go. Instead of red hot American summer, wet hot American summer. Veto. <laughs> my, my puns are great. Sw- or swimming away from the beach or something like that. Come Leaving to Leaving the, the beach. Or open water or something like that, you know. As we travel to the open water, to the Come. sea. Come for the beach, stay for a bite. <laughs> That's pretty good. We don't we don't necessarily have to verb it, but that was good. Mm-hmm. What was the one you said before, Joe? Though Josh, um, before I said the whole "come for the beach, whatever, whatever." Out in open water or something like that. Out into the water. That's, that was close to a death clock song. Yeah, into the water, to to the water. Have have a splash, splash into summer, splash. Swim with the fishes. Well, it's a water theme. We don't have to be on the nose about it. No, no. It's like I said, we just need something really generic. It doesn't have to be like Road to Independence Day was awesome because it's, that was a good name for that for it. So this it's like just needs to be summer swimming part one, you know? Into the jaws of summer. Oh, God, that's such a good one. Oh, or, damn. I like it too long. Jaws of summer. Oh, summer yeah. bite. Summer swim. Take a bite out of summer. Yeah, oh. to, you gotta keep in mind, like, be able, this is gonna be on the title of our podcast too. Just the jaws of summer, or just say jaws of summer. But then we have, I guess it was Road to Independence Day. Mm-hmm. So Road ID four jaws of summer. Sail into jaws. Sail into jaws. Swim into jaws. Mm, I think mm, these aren't. They do, they don't flailing like... in the waters. Yeah, I like that one lady at the beginning of Jaws. Flailing in the water. Flailing in part the one. water. Flailing in the water, part two. Or flailing in the water series. Uh, I think, <laughs> there's something in here. We can. I we know. Can... I'm, I'm. It's on the tip of my tongue, and I can't think of the. Yeah. What was the name of um, Quint's boat in Jaws? I don't know. Maybe we can. Uh... Hmm. Huh. This is making for great audio. All of us going, huh. Yeah, thank God uh, I don't have to edit this. Don't drown. <laughs> don't drown. All kids out. No, that's too long. And I can't use adult swim. That's taken. All swim. Like we did at the pool. It used to be an all swim. Summer dive. Summer Just, swim. Summer swim. Um, beach season. Maybe we could go beach season. I like the idea of beach. So I say, uh, beach vacation. Life's a beach. No, Terrible. that's so lame. <laughs> We're three smart men here. One of us made an AI to find movies. We can Not come really up with a name. AI, but uh, yeah, I, I burned all my brain cells on that. <laughs> uh, Nigel, what what are some thoughts coming into your head here? Oh, I'm thinking of um. What's the term like? You're in the water. You want somebody to come in here. Well, what do you say? Like the water's nice. Water's fine. Water's perfect. Something like that. Like, come on, the water's uh, good. The water's nice. Let's go swimming, or let's let let's stay out of the water. Let's not go swimming. Let's jaw jacking in the water. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> let's go fishing. <laughs> Something fishy going on. No. No. Cruise to the season. Cruise to the summer. Cruise to the beach. Oh, I love it. Yeah, cruise. Uh. Beach cruising. Beach cruising. We gotta fit Jaws in there too, though, because we had Road to Independence Day. Like beach cruising and Jaw Jacking. Oh, damn it. We're, we're there, guys. We're there. We're right there. Not necessarily. Like it does say Road to Independence Day, but I do like having Jaws in there. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Oh, I was trying to think of a pun with vacation and Jaws, but beach job. No. Now, let's have a... table this one. <laughs> Drift. Drift into Jaws. No. Drifting, Sail into drifting, drift, drifting to Jaws. I think we need a, we need to sleep on this one, guys. Yeah, we yeah, need to sleep on. We're this literally, part. just like blowing our load everywhere. That's the theme of tonight: is blowing your load. And honestly, we've been on here for three hours now. I think 
two. My family misses me. So Sorry. we're going with we're going with Tom's water list, and we need we need a, a a title for our next list. I will brainstorm some ideas. You guys brainstorm some ideas. I don't think we need to meet online again. So Friday night we're watching the Life Aquatic with Steve Zazu. Yep. All right. So um, we just to run it through, um, taking Jeff Goldblum to Life Aquatic. Right. Willem Dafoe to Aquaman. Right. Nicole Kidman to Dead Calm. Right. Sam Neill, Hunt for Red October. James Earl Jones to Swashbuckler. And finally, Robert Shaw, Jaws. All right, well, uh, gentlemen, I pre- this has been awesome. I win a list. Our second time ever doing this, so I'm excited about this. For those bots and listeners out there, tune in this weekend when we may have a name for this. We may not. We're so decided, but we will start things off with a splash with Life Aquatic. Until then, I've been Tom. Go ahead, I've Dan. been Ben. And I've been Josh. Uh, thank, shout out to Podbean for hosting us and iTunes. You can find us on iTunes as well. Uh, and, Nigel, and Spotify wanna... now. Can we, can we be found on Spotify now? I believe so. Yes, we can. Yeah, so Spotify, Podbean, and iTunes. So, yeah, big, big ups to those for uh, hosting us. And thanks for our listeners, especially Peggy, for uh, being our first listener. Thank Turn you. To the channel. Yeah, friend of the and channel. And as Peggy. always, um, this has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Thank you for joining us. Yep. Good night. This has been the fire pit. You have a good night. Uh-huh.